Lord, Saginaw Valley United. Welcome to our midweek service. Good to see everybody tonight. God bless you all. I'm excited to see what God's going to do in this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming out on this cold night. It's been a chilly week this week. Winter decided to finally show up. And uh, I don't, is anybody excited about that? No? Amen. Uh, the mosquitoes won't be as bad during the summer now that they've all frozen. Thank the Lord. It's about the only positive we might get out of it, but um, what's that? Apples? Oh, apples need freezing weather too. Um, well, let's stand together. We're going to open in prayer. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. And if you're joining us online, thank you for tuning in. Um, keep in mind that we are starting our next series of Growth Track for February. Uh, if you're interested in that, um, please see Kyle Thayer. He's teaching the next class, or you can sign, uh, let one of our pastoral staff members know. Uh, we've seen a lot of good things out of last month, and uh, we're excited for another four-week session there. Friday, February 3rd, which is this Friday, we have an Anthem Mario Party Night here at Saginaw Valley at 7 p.m. Uh, Saturday, February 11th is next weekend. We have Men's Morning Manna. And then also February, we're uh, starting the Spirit of Freedom back up, so you can sign up. Um, that starting February 15th, you can sign up in the foyer for that. February 15th through the 19th is Anthem Youth Week. Where's all the anthem? Excited for that. Uh, starting with Wednesday with a workshop at 7 p.m. Thursday, there's split sessions. Friday, there's a youth rally. And then we have a Sunday service at 11, which will be a youth-focused service. And then on Saturday, February 25th is our next hyphen service. Uh, so we're looking forward to to those things. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to one of our staff members and we'll uh, point you in the right direction, give you as much info as possible. Uh, but I'm excited to see what God's going to do here tonight. If you have a need, why don't you just raise your hand? You know, we all have a need, most likely, on some level. If you know somebody that needs a touch, healing, let's mention them in prayer. But let's just pray that God would do his work tonight, that God would have his way in our service and speak to us and do a mighty work. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God for another opportunity to come and worship your name. Thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ, that we can come together and we can encourage each other, we can lift each other up, and we can worship you, and your presence can fall in this place. It can lead us, it can direct us, it can mend the broken hearts, God. It can heal, and I pray, God, for all those that need a touch tonight, Lord. Those that are sick, those that are, are in need, God, you own the cattle on a thousand hills, God, and we're trusting in you, Lord, for a blessing, God. We're trusting in you for a healing, God. We're trusting in you for direction tonight. So, Lord, I pray right now, God, that as we worship your name, that your presence would take its liberty, that it would move in this place. Move freely, God, in our hearts and our lives, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Why don't, you, why don't you worship with us tonight? God bless.
Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are thankful to know that name above any other name? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. While you remain standing this evening, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 27, it says, For thou, O Lord, for thou, O Lord, hast, for thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servants, saying, I will build thee a house. Here the Lord is saying to David, I'm going to build you a house. The scripture goes on, Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O O Lord God, Thou art that God. Thy words be true, and Thou hast promised this goodness unto Thy servant. Therefore now let us let it please Thee to bless the house of Thy servant, that it may continue forever before Thee. For Thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with Thy blessings let the house of Thy servant be blessed forever. And in another place the Scripture says, Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. So tonight on this portion of Focus Prayer, I want us to pray for this house. I want us to pray that God's anointing is in this house. We know that the work of the Lord is going out from this house. But we want this place to be blessed. We want it to be a place of anointing where those that are needing healing can find healing. Those that need salvation can find salvation. Those that need direction and strength, they can find it in this house. The Lord told David, I'm going to build you a house. Now we can build this edifice, we can build this, we can hang lights and we can paint walls. But if the anointing isn't in here, no change, no everlasting change is going to happen in anybody else's life. So let's pray that God's anointing would fill this house and fill this place. Lord, we thank you, mighty God, Lord, that you've given us a promise that you would build the house. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, that you've given us a place to come together, to magnify you, to worship you, to lift up your name. Mighty God, I pray that this place would be a holy place, a place of reverence, so mighty God, a place of respect unto your word. We pray, God, that there would be an, an anointing, oh God, that would break the chains of bondage, Lord. I pray, mighty God, as we come into this house as your people, not to take it for granted, but to be grateful and thankful, Lord, that you have provided us this place of worship. Mighty God, let this be a house of healing. Let this be a house of joy. Let this be a house of uplifting, oh God. I pray, Lord, that there would be a brand new anointing, Lord, that would fill this place, oh God, that every time we come together, Lord, that lives would be changed, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration in your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, almighty God. A house called by your name. A people called by your name. Mighty God, we love you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we worship you. In Jesus' In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'll wait for you to come. I'll Cause when I'm with you, Lord, it always leaves me wanting more. Here's our praise, you can dwell with me. Come again, come again. Let the glory.
give that hand clap just for a little bit longer. Can we raise our hands and just tell him how much he means to us? Just verbally tell him, God, you're amazing, God. Let's just take a moment and give him all the praise what he's done this week, this month, this year already. Lord, we we don't deserve these blessings. Lord, we don't deserve these things that are happening to us and through us, God, and we love you. We serve an amazing, amazing amazing God. Let's let's give this worship team a round of applause for pushing us through some worship, giving him the glory. I want to tell you guys about a story as 
some others help me out with these chairs. We're, we got something special planned for you. You guys can be seated. I just want to tell you, we, we go to an awesome church. I'm just going to tell you, this is not your normal church. There's some powerful spiritual things happening in this church. I got one amen, and she was my sister-in-law, so I'm a, that doesn't count all the time, right? We have some powerful things happening in this church, amen? We have people being delivered from addictions. We have people receiving the Holy Ghost. We have people being baptized. We have people having the Holy Ghost. We have miracle signs and wonders at this church. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. Because I believe the end time revival is not just going to be some little like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I think people are going to come all around the world to see miracle signs and wonders. Is that okay? I believe he, we're going to see visible healings. We're going to see people get up from lame to walking. Deaf ears open. Blind eyes open. I'm not just saying this because it's, I'm, this is why I read in the Bible. But church, it's going to take a church to get excited about it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a church that has that faith inside of them that says, you know what, I don't care what we might sound like. I don't care what we might look like. I don't care what others might down the road think of us. I'm excited to proclaim his name. Uh, if you're with me, shout amen. I want to open this up. If my friends can help, help me come up, James and Nora, can you come up? They're going to help me tonight. My wife, if they can help, she can help me tonight. She helps me every day, so this is a normal day. Um, man, we, what's the Bible say about every idle word, right? If you know the word, you'll be judged to every idle word. Dennis, I had this really bad, not bad moment. It was kind of a testimony that opened up the door. But I had this, like, you ever have a moment in your life where you're like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. Me and my sister-in-law are just in one vein here. Like, it's just... We must be the, the sinners here or something. I don't know. Who's ever just said something that you just regret, right? I was, somebody was plowing my driveway, and he asked me about my knee. Clearly, like, a, you know something's wrong. I broke my knee. Okay, like, wow, Kyle, you broke your knee. And, you know, I was talking to him, and we were talking about my heart issues, and we're talking about my knee issue now. And I told him, it just, like, this word slipped out of my mouth. And I was like, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have luck at all. And I said it really jokingly. And I'm going to tell you, this person is not the most religious person I know, right? He's kind of religious, but he doesn't even go to church every Sunday. And, you know, I'm a minister. He comes out and rebukes me. And I'm like, oh. He said, don't speak those negative things. And that made me think. Like, I'm like, Lord, you know you're right. You spoke the world in existence. And every idle word we speak. I think some, I'm, I'm not trying to preach up here, but I think sometimes we just need to speak things over our life tonight, right? As I spoke bad luck over my life, I need to speak life into my life. I need to be like my daughter. You know what my daughter says every day I, I see her? She's like, you know what, Dad, Jesus is going to heal your leg. I'm like, but the Bible also tells me faith like a child, right, Sister Bonnie? That was kind of two cents. I want to welcome Sister Nora and Brother James up here. They are our outreach directors. Let's give them a round of applause. Today, I... <laughs> Sister Nora's nervously laughing up here. I love, I love the Wilkinsons so much. They're great people. Tonight, yeah, I think they deserve it. These people do so much that we just don't even know about. Did you know that we help supply needy families with furniture and clothes? Some of us probably don't even know that. Food, it happens right here. So I am very thankful for these people. But we have these young people. Um, I'm young, right? I'm just kidding. Young people up here. Okay, usually that joke does really good. Okay. <laughs> but we have these people up here to tell you that we want to make him known in 2023. Yes, we... We did a really, pastor says this all the time, or lately has been saying this, we did a really good job of kind of having church in here last year, right? In 2022, his goal this year is making him known outside of these four walls. And who better to have than our outreach director up here? So we're going to open it up for some questions, and we really want this to be kind of really 
organic. So, you know, I'm going to open this up for my wife first here, okay? Yeah, so let's just give my wife a hand of applause. She, de- she deals with all my stuff. I want you to describe in, in a short three minutes an outreach experience that you've had in your life. Well, um, one experience. Um, just one. Just one. We'll be here all night. I know I won't be here all night. Um, so I know for, for me, my experience, I, I do a lot. I don't do a lot. I do Bible studies. That is, that is one of my passions in life and what gives my spirit joy is our Bible studies. And um, so I've done Bible studies uh, with young ladies um, um, periodically through my, my spiritual career <laughs> um, life. Um, so I've done a few of them, and um, it is just such a, one of the best things to see when you're teaching someone a Bible study, and you're working with them, you meet with them, you know, at least once a week, and you see the Bible, the Word of God transform that person once they start getting into it, and they dig into the Word, and you can just see the transformation in their daily life, in their in their even their countenance starts to change. And that is probably one of the greatest joys that I have found in, in outreach for, for me. That's awesome. I love that experience. My wife, I love the story my wife has with this young lady named Faith. Um, I'm sure we've seen it bring her, her little sister and her father with her. Um, that was somebody that she discipled and went to Starbucks with and coffees. And um, we actually did senior pictures for her, right? Um, and like her dad was baptized, right? And her sister was baptized. And that's the power of discipleship and Bible studies. I'm going to ask the, um, James or Nora that wants to take this next question. I would love to hear both of you guys' experiences. So the, uh, give a d- description or describe an experience of outreach that you have guys had. I was thinking when Janessa was talking about Bible studies, and she's so right about just doing Bible studies and Honestly, if we've been in church for more than a year and we've never taught a Bible study, honestly, shame on us. You know, I feel bad if I go a while without having a consistent Bible study. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, a lot of times I think we get intimidated by it. But it's funny, sometimes I've done Bible studies, I'm sitting there, I like to do search for truth. It's just, I just, I just love this Bible knowledge. It just sticks in my head and stuff like that. And, when we do them together, sometimes I, I joke with her about it sometimes. Well, I, I know all this, these odd things and stuff like, you know, why Ehud was left-handed and just weird stuff like that. But, but she's like, I always say, you're the touchy-feely person. She can deal with the, the feelings of people and get into that in the Bible. And it's just like, I, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's just. But Bible studies are just so easy. But sometimes I've gone, I'm, I'm studying, I'm getting kind of, trying to get worked up for Bible study. I get in there and go to teach the guy the Bible study, and it's like literally all you do is sit there and tell the story. It's like I've been so prepared and just like, why did I waste all my time studying? I didn't even need to do it because I'm literally just sitting there like telling the story of like Adam and Eve, and the guy's just like, wow. Because there's so many unchurched people around us that don't know. It's funny and it's, you run into them more and more all the time. The people I've never even been to a church ever. They have absolutely no clue what a church is. Zero. And it's just so. Don't ever be intimidated by a Bible study. You know they're not going to ask you about Melchizedek or something. They're not going to do it. It's it's and honestly, you go to do it the first time. Most of the time it's. You struggle to even open the Bible because people are hurting so bad. And they'll just sit there and talk and talk and talk and talk because they just want someone to talk to that's going to listen. And it's literally, I think think it's happened every single time I've gone to do a home Bible study. As you just sit there and you talk to them and basically all you do is you're Jesus' representative that walks in their door. And that's about it the first time. And it's just... So if you've never done one, I very much encourage you to get one. Yeah. You know, and how do I get one? You just simply say, Lord, lead me to someone. And you know what he's going to do? Yeah. He's going to lead you to someone. Just 
keep your eyes open because he'll definitely lead you to someone. I, I love that, Brother James, because I thought about my friend has this famous saying. He always says, God gave us one mouth in two ears. And sometimes we just need to listen more than we open our mouth. And um, I think that we overlook the power of conversation. Like, and sometimes I'm like Brother James that I will psych myself. It's like whoever took like jumped in a, a, a body of cold water. Like, and it's just like to psych yourself up. You're like, I got this. I can do this. And then you do it and you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad, right? And that's a lot like Bible study. Like you psych yourself up and then you get in that moment and you get like, oh, this is really nice, right? Like you're like, this is enjoyable. I'm actually creating a friendship. And I think most of the time where I love the joke about the order of Melchizedek. Like, we're not even going, I'm, you're going to blow my mind, right? Yeah. But, like, we don't have to, like, we just said, I love what you said about this unchurch. I, we're, we're seeing a generation or an influx of people that have never been to church, right? There was a standard in our, in our culture that everybody at least has been to church somewhat or knew who Adam and Eve was, knew who Moses was, Noah, the ark, right? But the reality is sometimes they don't even know the story. Yeah. And so, like, starting from the beginning is kind of exciting, so I love that. And sometimes it's just a, a five-minute conversation. Yeah. I think, okay. too, one of, one of the greatest things about that, too, and I think one of the greatest things that need to be taught right now is um, just the creation story. Mm-hmm. Because so good. If, if people can get that and begin to see that, it changes their mind. And I think especially with kids going into college and stuff, because you know, I think we all understand this in here, but colleges are trying to indoctrinate our kids. Oh. And it's just, this is one of the first things to go after is God. And if, if, you, if we can get that grounded into them, that, you know, God created the heavens and the earth. And just the, the, the basic stories are so important. Right. And Jesus. it's like, it's a simple story, right? Yeah. It's like, where do we start? It's usually where people ask, like, where did we come from, right? And so it's like, boom, we have the answer. So it's an easy win for us. Like, I love yeah, and I think, I think sometimes, sometimes I think we miss it too. Because I remember, uh, I basically, I was kind of in and out of church. A lot of you know this until I was like 19, the end of 19. And I was 19, almost 20. And I can remember sitting over on the Dixie with Pastor and still with questions in my head. With, and I remember sitting there asking Pastor, and I, I had, at this time, I had, you know, I'd been baptized, received the Holy Ghost, and I was coming yeah. to church consistently. I asked him, Pastor, what do I need to do to make it to heaven? Wow. Because I was still yeah. unclear in my head. Wow. And we, we just need to bring clarity to people. Yeah. And I love that. Sister Noah, can you tell your, your story? I would love, once again, we're, we're on the, our, first, our first question, but uh, I promise we don't have too many questions, so we won't keep you all night. I got a daughter that needs to get to bed, but... I want to hear about your experience and outreach, just a, a one experience that you've had. Oh, man. I know. Uh, You're like, here. let me go through, like, the hundreds that I have. <laughs> uh, well, you were talking about Bible studies, and then it got me to thinking about uh, one, one person in particular, um, but then it got me to thinking about another cool thing. So, <laughs> okay, so hopefully I'll be quick here. But to the Bible study one, there was a woman that we had met. Um, I believe she was... I don't even re- recall how she, how we even met her, but um, she's like, I, I, I want the Holy Ghost, and we're like, well, wow. well praise the Lord, yeah, yes, amen. that's awesome, you know yeah. about the Holy Ghost, that's cool, yeah, let's, let's do a Bible study, okay, yeah. you can get the Holy Ghost tonight, and during that time, it was VOH, and so, what a perfect time, yeah. you know, like, you know, let's, oh, women of worth, that's what it was, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's where we met her, we invited her to VOH. We did a Bible study in the back, Mm -hmm. um, like during the break sessions, I remember. Um, So while we're in the back, we did this, uh, like, you know, it's a quick Bible study um, on the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Did it quickly. She's she's like, I just just want God to live inside of me. And I'm like, this is awesome. Praise God. You can get that right now. We're going to pray for that after we're done with this Bible study. This is going to be great. And... uh, (laughs) So we're doing the Bible study, and she was talking about her, you know, like, issues and different things that were going on in her life. And, of course, that's usually how it is, Sister Janessa. (laughs) Uh, It it is like Brother Jesus said, too, is uh, they just want to go into. Yeah, they just want to talk about Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're like, you know what? You know, let's pray about that. So 
we were praying, and as we uh, were praying, she was speaking in tongues. And wow. then she's like, oh, I just want the Holy Ghost so bad. I just want the Holy Ghost so bad. Hello. And I'm like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, let's, um, all right, well, let's finish this Bible study. <laughs> yeah. We did the Bible study, and I said, let's pray again. And so we prayed again, and she's like, you know, again, she, she was, she speaking was speaking in tongues. in tongues, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> well, this is awesome. You're yeah. just kind of moving right now. Yeah. So during that, uh, I said, so what? What exactly just happened? Yeah. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just really want the Holy Ghost. I said girlfriend like what what are you doing like what you're, what just happened you're what did you yeah, what yeah. did you just what just happened and she's like well i just started speaking in in a different language i but i really want the holy ghost i said girlfriend you got it yeah, <laughs> so you got it. and and then it was uh just that revelation that she had yeah. she got baptized in jesus name she came out of that water i remember her hands were lifted up the yeah. glory of god so fell good. on that this room it That's was so, so powerful yeah. just because one woman had a want and yeah. a need yeah. and we were able to fulfill that need at that point and i think the most important thing with outreach most ex like uh, amazing thing is just meeting someone at their need oh man that's so good just their needs if you, anyone yeah. wants to do anything in outreach, that is so good meeting them at their needs wherever it may be and yeah. That was where the Bible study thing came wow. in, but yeah, I don't know if you want that, to. Want no, to that's <laughs> such that's such an uh, interesting experience because like you're like somebody's searching, and I love this idea of meeting somebody where their need is, right? Because like most of us work in a career, right? Most of us work. Um, I love what Brother Pete said. It, like the church needs career people focus. I just want to echo that. I love that. If we're all pastors, the the mission wouldn't be funded, right? But in business, you always try to solve a problem with a need, right? Like, your product needs to solve a, a need. That's what we're doing. That's what you did. You're solving a need that people want. Like, and the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And that's what that person was. That's so, I love that story, Sister Nora. I love that. All right, let's move on to the next question. What is your personal definition of discipleship? Um, Brother James, you want to you take this one first? I think I just think of when you said that I just think of Paul when he said just said follow me oh, as wow. I follow Christ right. and I it's just that. it just came to my head um I'll tell you I got a side project I do and I hope this relates <laughs> I got a side project I do and it started years ago and some of you that know me know that you know we go up north, I do off-road stuff, and we were up with a guy, and it was about 2 in the morning, and the guy wasn't coming to church at the time, and it, it, like my car died, 2 in the morning, dead, and just like, what on earth, okay, so we get out, and we're, you know, it was me, Zach there, I think Joel was there, and the car's dead, it's just, we're joking and laughing, just like, whatever, and it's just, you know, I'm changing some parts out and swapping parts out. You know you're really frustrated at this moment, though. <laughs> too, too we're we're still just, we're joking and laughing, just having a blast, but it's like, and it's just like, what on earth is going on here? It's just like, and I'm just like, what? I'm just confused. It's like, why is none of this stuff working? It should work <laughs> at this point. It's like, okay, we weren't too far out, and we were like a mile or two out. So I was like, okay, we'll just tow it back, no big deal. We get back about 3 in the morning. We push it back up on the trailer. and So we're sitting there, and it's like, I wonder. And if anyone knows, it's, it's a Volkswagen thing. I walk over to the car. She fires right back up. Boom! It's like, you stupid car. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> then I go home, and I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking about it for a week. And I'm sitting there on and off thinking about different. I'm going out still swapping parts. So I'm putting the old parts back on. It's like, and it fires right up. It's like, what is going on here? This is so weird. And... It didn't, and then I was talking to the, that guy that went up there, his wife, mm. and she said, he was so blown away by you guys. I was like, what are you talking about? I said, when your car died, said you guys were sitting there joking and laughing. He said, 
honey, they, they weren't throwing wrenches. They weren't cursing. They weren't swearing. He's like, I've never seen that before. Wow. And it's just like, well, that's awesome, you know, that we're, 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 we're showing Jesus to people. Right. And it's also awesome that now I know why my car died. <laughs> and, but, so we, we started doing this thing where it's like, okay, maybe there's something more to it. And oh, yeah. That's I, so I, good. I started this YouTube channel. Yeah. And this is what we do. We just go out and we film just all of our stupid adventures. And then sometimes it's on video that we pray. We always pray, but sometimes it's on video that we pray. We're just, you know, we're just, just yeah. showing Jesus. That's it. Yeah. You know, we're not pushing it. We're just showing it, Jesus. and it's 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 honestly it's funny. Some of the people we know through this, it's like some I get literally comments from around the world about people. It's like you guys are just a bunch of good guys doing this, and I get comments back from people. Yeah. You're not smoking, you're not drinking, That's so and good. it's just That's so good. they're kind of blown away by it, and it's just. And I, I was wondering. Uh, about a year ago, we went up up to a guy's shop, and we had to pick up some something up there, and we're talking. We were in there for a few hours just talking, and we're up there, and he's like, yeah, I get, I get some people that ask about you guys, and you know what I just tell them? I just tell them, yeah, they're just a bunch of good guys going to having fun, and said, in the, his words, they're not smoking, they're not drinking, they're not doing all this stuff. They're That's just so going good. up to have more fun than yeah. anybody yeah. cleanly, <laughs> and it's just like, Okay, God, that's my confirmation that this is working. Yeah, and it's 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 funny too because it's like I, just some of the the comment I get people people just comment on stuff, and some of the people we know through it, mm. it's like God setting something up because some of the yeah. people in the whole genre of all this stuff, they're the big name people, and it's yeah. like they watch our stuff. That's incredible, and it's just like, well, that's cool, God, that you're working with my little side project here that, but. that's incredible you know that makes me think of when you said paul said you know follow me right as i follow christ and like there's i, I thought of this verse i wrote this down because it was, it's just been impacting me but acts 4 and 13 it says the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were uneducated common men they were astonished like my first thought was we're just normal people right James, like, we're just normal people, but the next thing was so cool, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus, mm. like, that was your discipleship, right, that these people are, rec people online, people that you go riding with, recognize, you're like, wow, James has been with Jesus, mm. and I think that's the key of discipleship, right, like, showing these people, like, you spent time with Jesus, you're reflecting his light, you're being Christ-like, and so it's like, J like, imagine this, like, James has been with Jesus, that's incredible. Yeah, and just it was so much of it is just about. I think it's just in there's there's one guy I'm thinking of in particular when I first met him a few years ago. I, I bought some parts off from off Craigslist, and I met him a few hours away because I was at work and pulled over and then met him at three in the morning because he said I'll be up. But um, so I'm sitting there. We ended up sitting there talking for two hours. My work didn't like that. But <laughs> we were sitting there talking. I remember because I was holding his parts in my hand. It was still cold. And my hands both went numb because I'm holding these cold parts. But we were sitting there talking and you know, just talking about going to the sand dunes and stuff like that. Yeah. And wow. he mentioned that, um, yeah, sometimes I've been there 21 times this year, you know. And he's like, sometimes I don't got no one to go with. I said, you know what, buddy? Call said, me. Every time I go, I will call you. And wow. we've done that every single time. And he showed up a few times. Wow. But we were there the one time. And it was me and my brother. We're sitting there talking to him. And, you know, I work a blue-collar job, and people curse, but this guy curses. <laughs> it's funny. It has nothing to do with anything. Um, <laughs> but we're sitting there talking, and he gets talking because he was a construction worker and all this. And he's talking about, you know some of the worst people to work for are? Churches. Oh, so they're just, they don't pay. They stiff you on their payments all the time, and they're terrible. And we're just sitting there listening. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, that's not good. You're like, and, yeah, we're church people. <laughs> you know, and then it's like, <laughs> but it was a few months ago, I got another buddy that he does videos sometimes too. And in his video at one of the events we went to, we, we pulled up and I don't remember, I yelled something to him or something from my truck. 
with the trailer pulling in, and then I just drive around. That's in his video. Yeah. And then he's he's talk he's talking to that other guy I know, and they're sitting there. Oh yeah, that's James and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah they're good guys, and they're sitting there in his video, and they're yeah. talking back and forth. And he's like, yeah, and then and they're talking about us going to church and stuff, and it's just like, and that's I saw so that cool. in his video, yeah. and it's just like, wow, that's it's so like, powerful. It's just just. You know, there's so there's so things cool. This church is connected online. There's also another church member here, actually has a YouTube channel too that's growing crazily, and it's people are just showing just the light of Jesus being Christ-like online. It's powerful. The people are really hungry. I think you're noticing yeah. that, um, Sister Nora. I'm gonna open that up to your question. What do you see as discipleship? What is your definition of discipleship? Um, unconditional love. I love that. Yeah. through your friend's journey. You guys are now friends. It's unconditional. Not like on conditions like, all right, you came to church. You got, you know, you're not, you know, you came once, you came twice, but you're no longer coming. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to you no more until you come and reach out to me again. Yeah. No, unconditional love that I'm going to love you, whether you use me as a curse bag yeah. uh, to curse yeah. at when you're angry. Yeah. Or to use me uh, as someone just, you need someone to talk to at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, there's no conditions on it. Mm. It's that's walking so, with you. That's so good. Yeah. Showing God's love through that. Because I feel as, oh, this is where I got tissue. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's that okay. If they could just see, and some, sometimes individuals that you'll work with, they have so many trust issues. Yeah. And the majority of them have trust issues. Yeah. Um, praise the Lord. Um, because it's going to take a little bit. Yeah. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to take time. It's going to take some time. Yeah. But Jesus, they're going to see the grace. They're going to see the mercy. The They're going to see God. Yeah, yeah through it yeah. all. Well, oh, she's she's still coming back? Yeah. Even though I did this. Yeah. Or, or I called her I, this. I, yeah. I didn't call her back. Yeah, or I didn't do this, or yeah. I haven't been, you know. That is that is discipleship yeah. to me. I love with that. Them unconditionally. I, I Sorry, Sister Nora. I just, yeah. like, I kind of got emotional thinking about this because I won't say any names, but I remember this individual that I've spent so much time with like went out, traveled, seeing this person, and spent years, right, years investing and in just being a friend, right? This is what we're talking about, just loving people, uh, just talking to them, even if they ignore you, right? And mm -hmm. the common word now is ghosting, I guess, like if you ghost somebody or, um, <laughs> but like years, fast forward years later, this person is a faithful saint in our church, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it doesn't matter how long. I think we get in church, I think we get this misconception that, you know, we're going to talk to that person. They're going to come to church. They're going to love it. They're going to be, you know, raising their hands. But mm -hmm. that might not be the reality. I also think of uh, some of that you've talked to, my wife. Um, it, it might take a long time. Yeah. But you know what? That person starts coming. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you that question, Jay, is um, what's your definition of discipleship? Uh, my definition is just connecting them to God. And I know it's really simple, but um, there was one time when I, received, I don't know if it was, I guess it was a vision. I don't really know how to explain it, but I was standing right over there and the Lord put something in my, my mind, my heart. And I, it's really difficult to explain, but all I could see was I was connected to the sun or, or God. And I was reaching out and connecting others to myself, which was already connected to God. And it was a ring of people that were all connected to God and we we're all reaching out. And that is what discipleship is to me, it's like just connecting them to God. I know in, in my, when I have a disciple, I try to, I regularly reach out to them at least once a week. I touch them somehow, either I, I call them, I text them, I try to see them, especially early on, you know, in the relationship, I try to see them every single week, because I need to build that, that trust, the relationship, we, we need to have that face-to-face -face time, and once I have that down, and then I've taught them Bible studies, and I've invested in them a little bit more, 
um, then it kind of goes on from there. And I kind of, I try to assess their needs. Like, what do you need? You know, and that's what we are to people. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, helping the, the yeah. fatherless, going to the widow and the poor. And that's what we do. Yeah. That's the body of Christ. Yeah, that's that why exactly. we are together. That's so, that's so and I, I watched, I listen to a lot of podcasts now for some reason. I just picked it up. But there is a, a specific podcast that I love to listen to. It's the Biblos Network. It's great. You would love it. Biblos. Biblos Network by Nathaniel Urshan. And he talks about the word religion. And religion is uh, a, a Greek word, a legion is um, a, a ligament, I believe, and it talks about how it. If you talk about it in the in the body, the legion is a ligament, and re legion if you're you're bringing the ligaments and that's the so body so back together. Yeah. So when you think about like Ezekiel and the dry bones, he yeah. sp- all those wow. he spoke the word, and yeah. and the Lord came and put the body back together again. And that is what the purpose of of the church and religion is. We are reconnecting the body, the body of Christ to him. I so that. that's so powerful. Yeah. You know you know what I love about <laughs> she's gonna get she's gonna start preaching over here. Uh, she's listening to a bunch of podcasts because she, like we're starting to get in that like old marriage she doesn't even like listen to me anymore. She like puts her <laughs> headphones in and she ignores me. So, oh, it's, oh, it's definitely true. Um, but I love this idea of bod- the body of Christ because like Paul writes about this like there's no body that uh, no part that's more important, right? If if you if you didn't have a mouth, why would the ears be important if you couldn't? You know what I mean? And so that's the, so that's one thing I love about church and kind of where our church is now. The pastor is not the main person right he's he's an authoritative person but back in the day i remember it used to be like the pastor that does everything right outreach clean the bathrooms clean it's like no the body of christ is literally strengthening the church we're coming together and we're making him known through this that's why i love something else you said about time and money i think discipleship we just kind of had to accept that it's going to take some time and it's going to take some money right we might be paying for dinner for the next year, right? Or we might be t- paying for coffee for the next year. I, I, I want to leave this with a, a point here, and we're going to ask one more question, and we're going to wrap this up because we have a bunch of questions, but this has been great communication here. Um, I just, there was this, um, I was just preaching in Paw Paw, Michigan, and I just, I hate traveling. I hate staying in hotels. So I, like, woke up super early. I went to a coffee shop. And the, I think this is how easy and how hungry people are today. And you guys can probably speak up to this, too. Um, this guy, I love dogs. Like, I'm the kind of person, if a dog ran through that door, I'm probably going to, like, run and jump on the ground and, <laughs> and like, pet its belly. And I just want to, I love dogs. Mm-hmm. I feel so bad for Brother Pete's dog. And I feel so bad for Pastor's dog. <laughs> I just literally want to cry every time I hear a story about them. Um, but I literally said something about, I actually first took a picture of the dog. And so, like, he was like, hey, did you just take a picture of my dog? So the relationship kind of started out kind of weird. But I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm sending this picture to my wife because I absolutely love dogs. And he's like, oh, yeah, what kind of dog you have? And it was like 10 minutes later, this person didn't even know who I am. I'm out of state. I'm some weird bald guy just in a coffee shop all by myself. And this guy is over, like, I think it's so easy, though. People are so hungry. I want to challenge some people, like, that at work is a great place, that you have, you have, think how many people you touch at work on a daily basis, run into people at work. Or maybe you work remotely. I work remote, remote a lot. Your coffee shop can be the best place. Listen, Starbucks knows who I am. There's probably some other people in, in this church that know Starbucks, and they just come in, they know, and they say, hey, you know where you been? I remember I moved to Saginaw, and I was going to Saginaw Starbucks, and I just moved back to Bridgeport, and they're like, hey, where'd you where, where have you been? It's that creating relationships where you go. It's not preaching like, mm-hmm. you know, every, like you're going to hell or you're preaching the Holy Ghost every time. You're showing the love of God, right? So let me, I went on a tangent. Sorry, I'm wasting time too. So I want you guys to tell me one approach you use to making him known or telling somebody about Jesus, like that first conversation. How, what do you use for a conversational starter? Like if you're awkward, 
I'll let Sister Nora go, go first. Like, I see the, I see you arrive. You, you're the kind of person that probably just is like, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> well, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, a lot of people, if they do, are with me. My daughter can, uh, can definitely agree that I don't care where I'm at. <laughs> Unapologetic. I, love I don't care if I'm in the restaurant, in the middle of a line, yeah. where people are behind me. Yeah. Um, I will, if the Lord... Um, leads me to go pray and like yeah. ask them and it's like I gotta be obedient yeah. all right then all right here it goes <laughs> which is really interesting because since I was a kid I've had um, like social anxiety yeah. and agoraphobia really so I didn't even finish high school because wow. um, I was agoraphobic I couldn't leave the house that's crazy so that's my thorn in my flesh praise the Lord <laughs> is the social anxiety and now you're up here speaking to like a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, don't, men, don't remind me. <laughs> so when it, it's a challenge, yeah, it is a challenge. But I know that it is either me and my anxiety mm -hmm. or them going to hell. Wow. Yeah. So I got to push wow. it aside. For it seems I, simple when you say it that way, right? It's like for when uh, we are weak, uh, he is then strong. he is strong. Yeah. So this is a challenge, and it's a daily challenge. So it is approach that, yeah. all right, Lord, you want me to go up to them? All oh, right. You go. Hey, yeah. yeah. And it's like, hi. That's incredible. Um, you know, just the approach is the Lord has already opened the door, and you're sensitive to the Spirit. You already know the door is open. Mm. It's already there. Yeah. So it's you just walking through that door and, you know, just talking and just, hey, um, I'm sorry, my name is Nora. Uh, I know this is weird, right? Hey. <laughs> but then it begun, yeah. begins like that. Yeah. Um, to meet them, basically just to yeah. approach them. I love that because you're right. It's a promise for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord said the Great Commission in Matthew 28 and 19 says, go therefore making disciples of all nations, mm -hmm. right? We know that it's for everybody, right? And so you're like, I love this idea. I've been in the hospital more than I would like to admit. Who has ever been in the hospital before? No? Man, there's some healthy people here. Who's ever had an IV before? You know that tape? Why can't they make tape that comes off easy? <laughs> right? Like, we've been, we've been doing this forever. But sometimes I, I've noticed to break that barrier, it's just kind of like ripping the tape off. There's no easy way. You just kind of like, I just got to go in. Like, and it's so easy the way you put it. It's, it's, if I don't talk to them, I might never have this opportunity, and they might never hear God about God. Like, it's simple putting it that way, but then you like, and then what I love about you, Sister Nora, is like, if there's anybody that shouldn't talk to somebody, it's you, right? Mm -hmm. And so, how, it's you, so unique how God puts m the Moses is out there that can't, I, you know, he's got a stutter, and mm -hmm. you know, I can't do this, Lord, but if God can use you, he can use anybody. And that's the that's an example. That's why I love that you're up here and we're talking about it because I really want to show this church that anybody can do this. Anybody can do this, right? Um, let me hurry, hurry. I'll, I'll this is my last question. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for you. Give us um, how do you open a conversation with somebody that doesn't know Jesus and you just kind of break in, brother James? Yeah, for me it's hard. And a lot of you know, it's still to this day, I'm just withdrawn and yeah. quiet a lot of times it's like it doesn't bother me not to talk to people yeah. just in my own personal life you know but for me I relate to people through things a lot of times mm -hmm. even going out into the stores and stuff I'll just look for things on people something I can relate to people with it's like I don't know if Amber Ray remembers this we were in Myers a few years ago and I seen a guy and he's wearing a Vandals t-shirt and I said hey what's up Pat Brown and he's just the guy just turns, just starts laughing. It's just like, <laughs> but it just, it just broke that barrier, and I started talking to him. That's so good. But it's just that's so good. <laughs> but it's just it's 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 hard for me just to walk up and talk to someone out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, I gotta have something that connection. To, to, yeah, right. to relate to someone with. Yeah, and it's, I I do that all the time. It's just looking for people that you can relate to. Like, there's a guy at work, and honestly, you got to have some respect for the guy. He's my age, but he's still a, he's a hardcore punk rock guy. You know, he still rocks the mohawk and just, but he's just, 
And I just call him all these stupid names but every time he brings something down to our doors at work. And just, I just call him some stupid name I remember from the BMX the 90s. days. <laughs> yeah, and just, it's just like he just starts laughing. And now I talk to him all the time. Yeah. And it, it's cool because I was talking to him. And it's just like, well, why am I talking to this guy, honestly? Yeah. I don't live in Indiana yeah. where this guy's from. And I'm, just, and, just, and I'm just throwing all these stupid jokes at yeah. him all the time. His name's stuff. probably Kyle. And he's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And it's, we're talking, he's talking about all these... <laughs> <laughs> it don't start with a K though, but <laughs> <laughs> and we were sitting there talking the one time, and it's just, and he's telling me all these punk rock stories. I don't honestly, I don't really care, but it's just you know something to talk to the guy about. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like, and then he stops, and you know what? He's like, yeah, I, I haven't always been like this. He's like, mm-hmm. really? He's like, yeah, I actually grew up in church. Wow. Really? Wow. Well, that's why the Lord's having me talk to you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know? Okay. Just out of nowhere, but it's yeah. just because. I started opening the door, but honestly, that's what I do a lot of times. It's just I get that people connection. laughing. Just, yeah. just, oh, humor. Just, humor, yeah, humor disarms everybody. Or just, right? just honestly, for me, just doing stupid stuff yeah. and just getting people to laugh and just open because humor just opens people up so quick. Yeah, that's and, so true. I love that humor disarms. Can we uh, give a round of applause for our panel up here? <laughs> yes. Please. We have some talented people. Let's give James and Nora a round of applause for being a great outreach directors. I, I love this church. I love kind of the principles. I, I believe we're going to make Jesus known in a greater way like never before in 2023. Um, and you might be thinking, be like, hey, we're just trying to grow a church. Hey, we're just trying to. No, that's not the case. You know what we're trying to do? We're trying to tell people about Jesus. That really is. And Sister Nora said it's so simple, and she just kind of glossed over it. It's if we don't tell them, who will? Who will? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about showing the love of God to people that have no connection. And it might be in a coffee shop. It might be at a work set, setting. Um, Brother James, he does open up those conversations for a reason. I'm telling you, I had so many opportunities this past week that I shouldn't be talking to these people, but the Lord opened up. Travis, can you, sh- um, Brother Dan, can you show the picture of the flowers for me? I'm going to leave this with, this will be the last thing I want you, last thing as we go home and we're going to pray and we're going to pray in dismissal. But we can see all those colors, right? The, that rose, the pink, the white, the red, the green. And Brother P probably knows this because, like, he, Brother P's just the smartest guy, and he can rap, right? Who, who knew that? But why do we see those colors, right? Why do we see pink? Why do we see white? Why do we see green? So that pink flower actually is absorbing all the colors of the rainbow, right? All the colors God has created, right? And it's reflecting pink because that's the only thing that it's not absorbing. And I love that because if you knew the Bible, God uses the Bible and plants and human nature and the nature to reflect who he is and the mysteries of the Bible. What we reflect is what we show people. If we're not giving of our time, that's not going to shine through us. If we're not loving and we're just receiving love and not giving love out, we're not going to shine the, the light of Jesus, right? We will. It's like the Dead Sea, right? Why is the Dead Sea dead? Because it, it has an inlay. It has a river going to it. It should be thriving, but it never sends water out. And it becomes dead and it becomes stagnant. Saginaw Valley, I am worried if we are not giving and just receiving, we're becoming a dead sea to ourselves. God created us to make disciples of the whole world, not just a pastor, not just the ministerial staff, not just James and Nora, but he said, go make disciples of the whole world. Go multiply. And so let's stand real quick. I want to encourage everybody. Greater things are going to happen in 2023. And I know I've been referencing this verse many a times, but in the, the apostles, they, they were known, they said they turned their world upside down 
They turn their world on its head. Johnny, the book of Acts has never ended. We are those people. The book of Acts movement. We are the book of Acts. We are God's people. Brother Pete, we got to turn our world upside down. And that we have that power. We have that power in us through the Holy Ghost. God has empowered us to do those things. Let's all bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, I am so thankful for a mighty church. I'm so thankful for a great outreach program that's reaching people. But God, I'm asking you us to give a desire to reach our neighbor. God, I'm, I'm asking every one of us to get a desire and a, a pain and a hunger to reach somebody in the coffee shop. God, I'm asking somebody to get a vision of their co-worker sitting next to them at their church. I'm asking somebody to get a vision of their family member that has never been to church sitting next to them at church and worshiping them at or worshiping with them at the altar. God, I want them to get a vision of maybe a friend they went to high school with and they never seen before. And then they seen each other again at the grocery store. And they're like, hey, Kyle, how you doing? And I'm going to invite you to church. I want you guys to get that vision. Lord, bless us with that vision and hunger to see your people saved and you see that your name be known in Jesus' name. And we all say, amen. Thank you guys for coming. I'm just asking you guys, open yourself up to this week. Tomorrow, don't let a simple conversation go by that you're saying, like, like Brother James said, why would the Lord put that in my heart? Why would the Lord give me that opportunity maybe it's not a mistake i love you guys give each other a high five thank you guys for coming you guys are amazing thank you